Earlier, I showed you how to create a habit tracker in Notion using checkboxes and a progress bar. This week, I'm going to give you an alternative way to view habits in Notion through habit streaks, or in other words, don't break the chain. To do this, we're going to use an inline calendar, a linked database, and a few formulas. I'm also going to gamify it a little bit to make it more fun. Let's get started. So first, let's create that inline calendar. Call it chain habits. And then we're going to create a linked database down here and find chain habits. That'll just give us an alternate view. Up here is our main database, and down here is just a linked view of it. We're going to keep this a table. Let's just change some of the names of these properties. Let's call this habits. Call this date range. We'll keep tags. And we'll have another property called complete. Now I'm going to show you how this works. So let's say for this example, we started a habit on the 6th of July. Let's call it write 300 words per day. To drag this habit across multiple days, we can hover over the cell over to the right. When this arrow pops up, we can just drag over. Let's say up to today, we have completed this streak. Down here, you can see that it is updated between July 6th and July 13th as our date range. Now let's create a little tag, maybe call this writing. And I'm going to hide this date range. It's a little bit redundant to have it showing here and have our calendar up here. This complete property is going to be used in instances of a habit that you only want to maintain for a set period of time. For instance, if we only wanted to write 300 words per day for one week and then end the habit, I'm going to click Habit Complete. This property is important to differentiate a complete habit from maybe a habit break, a streak break. For instance, if we ended this streak on the 10th and wanted to start it up again on the 13th, I don't want this to be registered as a complete habit, but a habit break. But we'll get into all that later. First, let's create our achievements. So speaking of that property complete, let's begin this with if our property called complete equals true, we're going to return an achievement called successful habit. Now let's figure out where our habit streak begins. For instance, do we want our habit streak to begin the very day we start, or do we want to give it two or three days before it is considered a true streak? For this instance, we'll say only after two days are complete is it called a streak. Otherwise, we're going to say chain start. To do this, I'm going to say date between I'm sorry, if date between the end of the property named date range and the start of property called date range, the days between are less than three, I wanted to say chain start. Now, if my chain has been maintained for a whole week, like right here, I want it to say weekly chain complete. To do that, we're going to do something very similar where we say if date between the end of property called date range and the start of property called date range in days is equal to seven, I want it to say chain week 
complete. Now the next condition I want to put in is if I've maintained my habit for at least 25 days, I want it to say chain legend. Now you can alter these conditions to meet your needs. This is just an example. I just want to show you how to format all of this. So for this one again, if date between property named date range and start property name date range. For this one, let's say is greater than or equal to 25. We'll say chain legend. The last one I want to do is if we have maintained a streak for at least 100 days, I want it to say godly. Now, after we have all our conditions that we want in here, we want to put in a false condition. So whenever all of these conditions do not apply, I just wanted to say chain streak. Now we're going to close everything out. If you look at the number of if statements we have, we have one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to have five parentheses at the end. One, two, three, four, five. This looks like I have misspelled something on define function date boutine. So let's see where that is right here. And now we're good. Now, as you can see, we have, okay. So right here we have complete checked. So it says successful habit. Otherwise, it says chain week complete. Now, if we drag this over to like the 14th, it'll just say chain streak. Let's go up to the 8th. Now, it looks like I don't really want this to say chain start because I did say earlier that upon the third day, I want the streak to begin. So let's alter this a little bit. Let's say less than two. There we go. Now when we pull it to seven, it will say chain start or six, it'll say chain start. Cool. Now let's drag this up to the 30th, drag this down to the 30th chain legend because it is greater than or equal to 25 days. So you can kind of play with this however you'd like. I find it really fun. Uh, I think it's just a fun way to track habits in Notion that may be more interesting to use than just check boxes. Now let's get further into this database. Let's add some more properties. Let's find the number of days within our date range. Let's keep track of that. That one is rather easy to figure out. Just date between property called date range. Sorry, let's put end and start property called date range in days and we'll return the number of days. Now we can also add another property that will help us archive chain breaks. Like I said before, we're going to call this broken question mark. give it a formula. This is what we're going to find. Let's make another example. Let's say we're writing 300 words per day and Friday, or I'm sorry, Saturday, we kind of slip up and we want to restart our habit streak on the 12th. Write 300 words per day. Now what I want to do is make sure that this is considered a broken streak. And then I want to archive it away because down here, 
I don't want two habits that are identical because it will get messy. If you break the chain a good amount of times, you won't know which one you are currently on and which one is broken. So to do that, we are going to use that broken formula. Like I said before, this complete checkbox is there so that we know that a date range from the past is actually a complete habit, not a broken habit. But let's identify what is a broken habit. Prop, the end of prop date range is less than right now. You'd think that would be a good formula to determine if the end of a habit ended before today. It doesn't really work, and I'll show you why. Let's go into properties here and just toggle broken. So this is telling me right here, of course this may be broken, but this is also telling me that it is broken even though it is clearly not a broken streak. This is because the now function includes a time. So if I drag this over to the 14th, suddenly it's not broken. What I'm saying by checkbox before now includes the time. So here on Monday, I'm not specifying a specific time on Monday. It is automatically going to be 12 a.m. on Monday. And if right now, like right now when I'm filming this, it is 11.33 a.m., any time before 11.33 a.m. is going to be technically before now. That's kind of the gist. So we don't want that. In order to get around that, we are going to use the date between function again. We can say it date between the end of property called date range and right now in days is less than or equal to negative one. Now we're getting somewhere. So now, correctly, this does not say broken, and this one still does. But I want to include as well this complete property. So we want to say, if property complete and date between the end of the range and now is negative one or less than negative one, it is not going to be broken. If date between end property called date range and now in days is less than or equal to negative one, then true, otherwise false. Oh, we have some misspellings. Now, and that should be parentheses. So if property is complete and in the past, the end date is in the past, that is not considered broken. That would be false. But if it is in the past and complete is not checked off, it will be broken. So now let's get rid of some of these brokens or completes from our main view. Let's create a page called archive. Chain habits. Let's full width. And let's filter this by only our broken and our complete habits. Let's go to filter and say if, if broken is checked or if complete is checked. We'll put it in the archive. 
Now, I don't want to view my broken or my complete habits in this dashboard view. So I'll do the same thing with filter, except I'll say broken is unchecked and complete is unchecked. Now let's do some more examples. Let's go back in time a little bit. Let's say we started a streak on the 2nd of June called uh, Make Healthy Dinner. And this is telling me it is broken because it doesn't run through to today. So let's run it through to today. Let's say we have been successfully maintaining this streak up to today. It will show up down here, make healthy dinner, and our achievement is chain legend because it looks like we have maintained the streak for 41 days. Now, if I were to click complete, it would disappear into our archive and say successful habit. We'll be able to differentiate our broken and complete habits, not only by these ticked boxes, but also by our achievement status. And if you want to divide these up even further in the archive, you can, for instance, you can make a view that's just for broken habits and another view for complete habits. Again, let's say with make healthy dinner, it is not complete, but we kind of messed up on Friday. It's going to give us a broken habit and we'll start up again whatever day we want to start up again. I know it can be a little bit tricky with formulas, so I hope I was clear. Um, I'm going to leave a link to this down below like I always do as a template if you want to use it and you don't want to figure out all the formulas, that's fine. If you have any questions, comment down below. I'm going to try my best to answer as much as I can. And I will see you next time.